So I'm here with Ron Porter. Ron is Product Marketing Lead within Amdox. And Ron, could you tell us exactly what is the 5G value plane? So the 5G value plane um, is all about this new need we see emerging for a very tight link and integration between the business and IT layers and, and all the way down to the new uh, dynamic and programmable 5G network. So, you know, 5G and, and we're obviously focusing on 5G standalone here and all of the new dynamic capabilities it will bring um, really has a world of, of network currencies and KPIs and elements that you can really tailor and connect to specific service requirements. So things like slices and of course, assured latency and reliability and density and of edge resources, um, exposed APIs and, and uh, 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 cloud functions or virtual network functions, anything that is needed per specific application requirement can be tailored for that service. And of course, we know of the control plane and the user plane that we have already in the 5G core. And we see this need for, for this new value plane to, to connect, like I mentioned, the business IT, but also partners and other enterprises and allow them to seamlessly integrate with the network um, not only from the functional perspective, but also bringing on the different business considerations and tying in analytics and exposure of APIs to really, uh, I would say to even to the extent of bringing the public cloud uh, model that we know into the 5G network. So essentially, just like uh, we are interacting and consuming the public cloud today in a very transparent, real-time manner, everything's dynamic, it's, just, it's not just box of static storage in the cloud that you are ordering and everything is, is you know, uh, um, uh, not agile and dynamic as we know it. So that's exactly the purpose and the need for the value plane. Thanks, Ron. So could you tell us how exactly will the 5G value plane uh, take advantage of 5G features to create and monetize innovative new services? To, to really leverage all of the innovative features of the 5G network, we've actually started um, using a term we call NES, Network Embedded Services. And this ties into to the positioning of the service provider and how up until now, you know, even in the 5, as the 4G network was rolled out and we got faster speeds, new services came into the market, but all of these services um, followed a mode, uh, business model of, of an OTT, of over the top. They went directly to the consumer. They did fine with, with best effort type connectivity. And as such, also the revenue and, and the money for these services went directly to the, to the application providers, completely bypassing the service providers. Now, again, the benefits of the 5G network is we have many more network currencies. We have all of these very advanced uh, 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 parameters and network um, features that we can tailor to specific requirements. And that really brings us to what we call network embedded services. So obviously it's a huge drive for innovation. I think the classic example everybody uses is using, you know, low latency um, to, to enable multiplayer uh, games that we, we uh, maybe not be possible in today's environment. But even things like doing rendering at an edge that's so close to you of, of an AR or VR service will allow the, the um, uh, end user devices to be much more lightweight, right? We're seeing a lot of uh, there's a lot of buzz now in, about very lightweight AR glasses. So again, being able to offload the process from these devices to the edge is another capability of the 5G network and, and the edge is an integral part of that. But once again, it comes back to the, to the value plane and how the value plane can connect the requirements of these different services. And, and again, they can be consumer or enterprise or in a B2B to X model, or th there's many new business models but you must have the value plan to connect these different business requirements, these different business models down to the service requirements, making sure they are working as you as as uh, was committed according to the KPIs to the SLAs to really bring out the full potential of these new innovative services. So not only enable them to work, but make sure you're monetizing them in the correct manner. Practically speaking, what are the 5G value plane components? So when we start to, to dive into specific components of, of the value plane, we start to identify um, you know, specific uh, stand, 5G standalone core network functions that must be part of this value plane. So uh, you know, we, we, the, the, the first and I think the most uh, clear um, uh, network functions that have to be um, uh, utilized 
uh, are around policy and charging. So the PCF and the CHF. And actually, although policy and charging have until today been often considered separately by service providers, um, to really bring this the, the, the value plane to life, you must have this unified look, looking at what we call PCC, policy and charging control, in a unified manner. And this is precisely because of the reason the charging is what meters and charges and, and counts the usage of all of the different parameters that are, you know, all these new uh, 5G currencies that I have to enable. I'm not saying you're going to charge and, and bill all of them, but you have to take them into consideration as part of how, you know, the, the, the monetization potential of my new 5G network. So the charging takes care of that. In, poly, in parallel, we must have this, this policy, this enforcer that makes sure the different services, and even in a single device, right, I might have a world of different services, each one should get a different performance. And policy is in charge of that, mapping the different service to the, the uh, you know, maybe to the appropriate network slice and utilize the appropriate network edge and ensuring it has the appropriate reliability. Um, uh, so all, these two components must work together and for that, we see the need for a, a centralized, a business-driven catalog to configure both of them. So when, now when I'm configuring a new service, these definitions automatically go into both of, the, the, both of these components, which again, they must work together and integrate. You know, policy must keep validating with the charging. Is this service under its allowance? Is it going over its uh, a quota or over the time that it was allowed or over the number of devices? Uh, uh, right, or maybe now there's issues of, of reliability. So, so all of this interaction between policy and charging must happen in, in an ongoing manner, um, in real time. Um, two additional elements that we've identified are uh, the NWDAF, the network data and analytics functions, which is all about the in-depth analytics that we are now collecting from across the network. And again, we have many more networks. The network now has a wide area of parameters across multiple domains, access, and edge, transport, core, and even going out to the public cloud. So collecting parameters from all across my network for the service and utilizing these analytics, leveraging AI to get operational insights, to drive closed loop automation, but also to maximize revenue. Because once again, the business considerations have to be part of this, right? If somebody paid for a higher reliability or another service is, 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 is uh, considered a lower reliability, this already ties the business implications to the operational implications and the analytics are in the, a very deep part of that. And the last component is uh, uh, NEF, the network exposure functions, which is all about exposing APIs from the network out to the world. And this is precisely where we are full blown going into the, the public cloud business models, right? The public cloud providers, they're all about exposing APIs, opening to partnerships, to enterprises, you know, come and leverage our resources as you see fit, as is needed. Everything is open to drive this ecosystem, this platform. And once again, the same thing has to happen for the network. Once again, utilize all of the uh, these different uh, value plan components that I mentioned. Um, and how can CSPs utilize the 5G value plane to take a more prominent role in the value chain? So again, C C CSPs have to, I think first and foremost, it's about the shift in the mindset, right? Moving from an infrastructure uh, 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 um, approach or point of view and understanding there's need for a platform approach to platformize your network, to expose the APIs, to have this full connectivity between the business and the, down uh, and the, you know, the underlying network. And although, like we mentioned before, much of the potential lies in 5G, 5G in the standalone core and when we have all the new features, we are starting to see, you know, uh, emerging offerings that really tie the business down to the network, all right? And this can be things like, uh, you know, even if whoops, you see offerings of, of top up of data that are linked to specific types of the network, or specific speeds of the network already. So it's something we haven't seen so much in the past. Right, or even tiers of data, speed tiers we've seen in the past, but the, the, the speed tiering was artificial or, or very much based on, on capping. Um, but now we're seeing different tiers, some are associated with 5G speeds and lower. So again, it's still in the artificial mode, but it's, it's the first steps that make sure that your system, uh, your different systems will be ready to handle uh, the new, more, I would say complex offerings as they come to market, but you are able to hide the complexity and I think that's much of the secret, being able to, to bring to your customers, uh, to consumers or to enterprises, especially to partners, 
um, these innovative approach to utilize your network, to leverage them, while you maintain a higher position in the value chain, right? Everybody, you know, the, 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 the talk about moving out of the down pipe position, I think it's, it's been discussed for many, many, many years, but, but the opportunity now is here, right? Moving from just a connectivity provider to being a unique solution enabler, and we talked about the NES is the network embedded services, or even solution creators, depending on your position in the partnerships, and actually, as a service provider, you need to be ready to support all of these different modes because some cases, yes, yeah, for different reasons, be it the uh, regional reasons or, or um, uh, you know, governmental reasons or the strength of the partner, you might choose to, you might need to be in a, a partner positioning. In other, uh, uh, I mean, in a connectivity provider positioning. In other cases, you can be the solution enabler. Again, much higher in the value chain now when considering revenue sharing and stuff like that. Uh, and if you take a, a deep dive and expertise in a, to a specific vertical, you can be an, an end-to-end uh, solution creator and really the front of the customer. And again, it might be not applicable for all lines of businesses, but if you need the agility in your systems and you need the, the, the value plane, the tight connection, this integration between the new dynamic network and the business and the IT and the partners uh, and different enterprises that will leverage you, to enable you the flexibility to really go in either of these ways that you choose and, and really maximize the potential revenue uh, of the 5G era, right? It's, it's, just, it's all about being prepared. Um, and much of that lies in starting today with the much more basic offerings out there. Well, thank you very much indeed for your time, Ron. We shall speak again soon. Thank you.